Good morning and welcome to Local Business Focus. I'm Sally Barker. Joining us on the show today is Peter Treneman from Group Support, proud station sponsor. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Sally. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Good to hear. We've had a good week, actually. Um, a couple of little wins, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but most importantly, I've actually had some people respond, okay? And I've given you the list of some yes. of the questions they've asked, which are quite interesting. Um, when you've got an IT person around, um, you can ask these sort of questions to them and get some real answers, not your friends or, or your family who sort of take a best guess at some of this stuff. Yes. You know? And that's why I say to you, it's always important to have someone who's trusted, reliable, okay, doesn't always agree with you, mm -hmm. okay, and avoid the three Fs, which are free, family and friends. Sometimes you'll get a good deal in that, in that mm -hmm. realm, but yes. quite often you won't, not for your business. No. So we have, um, what are there, about nine or ten questions we have here, so we should get stuck right into them. <laughs> um, how does a VPN work? Okay. So um, the other day I was talking about um, how the network, how the internet works and packets being sent backwards and forwards between places. Um, so what you want to do um, is when you're doing business, and especially when you're doing business with files and your database and your accounting system and those sort of things, you want to keep those packets secure. Okay, you want them to be secret. And so what you do is you set up a VPN, which is a virtual private network, okay. VPN. And basically that will be um, almost like you're sitting in the office. Okay, it also makes it secure. Okay, um, we can then um, get all your folders and files like you normally would when you're sitting at your workstation. Um, some, some accounting systems will allow you to access the accounting system across the VPN. Some require that you go onto a terminal server. Um, depends what you want to do with the VPN, but it's, it's an extension of the office to where you are. And normally it's for uh, the people who use mobile phone, uh, sorry, not mobile phones, laptops, um, or work from home. They're the most likely. It's also used when you have a, a branch office. Um, I have a client um, who has an office in Bunbury. So Perth and Bunbury are linked together with the VPN. So it's site to site. So it's not based on one person. Okay. Okay. And so they it's almost as if the people in Bunbury are sitting next to the people in Perth. Okay. Okay. So and that's what a VPN's used for. Wonderful. So VPN is a virtual private network. That's right. All right. So what's the difference between home licenses and business licenses? Ah, I get asked this all the time. Um, home licenses are cheap. Okay. Um, home licenses are, um, especially from um, operating systems, um, they're, you know, sometimes even as much as half the price. Okay. But they come with less features. That's what they sell down the, uh, the local uh, white goods store. Okay, where they sell fridges and, and couches, and they also sell computers, and the computers have Windows Home on them or something like that. Right. Um, the home operating systems don't link natively with the business servers. Okay, so um, if you remember some time ago, we spoke about um, domain names. Yes. Okay, and domain names go across the internet, you know, bhp.com. Okay. Well, domain names also go within the network of the business, inside the network of the business. And what they do is they, they, they form a club. Um, there's a work group situation, there's a work group side of things within um, uh, the Windows operating systems. The domain networking group is far more powerful. It's like work groups on steroids. You can automatically relay permissions so, um, you know, Bob doesn't have access to folder A, he only has access to folder B, but Frank has access to both, okay? Now, a domain can convey that information and those permissions straight away, right. okay? The home licenses, you have to log on, you have to create the script, okay? So you have to store the password and you have to store the password somewhere which is not quite secure. You know, someone can always get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea is that you want to make it easy for people, for staff, to use the computer system in a secure way. And you want to make it um, hard for them to crack passwords that aren't theirs. Yes. Okay. Right. Yep. 
and that's why you use the business licenses. And the business licenses are a part of your overall deployment of a network. So it's worth a couple of hundred dollars or the hundred dollars extra to buy a business license or a professional license, okay, on your um, operating system. And don't mistake, it doesn't. It does. This actually doesn't cover Word, Excel, Outlook, those things. Okay, they're all they're the same either way. Right. This is all about Windows okay. and the way it links to each other in a network. Okay. Does that explain it? That does explain it. Cool. So then let's <laughs> move on to the next question. Yeah. What antivirus software is the best? Well, there we go. Well, that's a million dollar that question. Is, isn't it? I get asked that all the time. And I mean, there's many people who have different opinions and we went, we touched on the idea that the, this is advice that is general advice. Um, first and foremost, the paid ones are normally almost always better. Okay, they're up to date. They pay, you pay for them to be up to date. Okay, so the free ones, there's a time lag or they don't have the functionality, whatever. So um, usually the paid ones are better. We use um, the, the units that are are monitored centrally, okay? So we put an antivirus um, installation on a machine and we monitor it. So we know where the machine's been um, infected. The machine sends a status report every, every night, okay, to say how it's doing, okay? And that means that we can get a, a good picture. Now for my business customers, they wanna know if Frank's machine or Francesca's machine, it's out in the wild, okay? So their office is you know, here in Joondal up at the radio station, okay? And Frank is down in Rockingham. They don't know what he's doing. I mean, he's supposed to be working and, and he, most likely he is. But if he's got infected with something, they want to know. They want to be able to give him a call and say, Frank, we need to sort your machine out mm -hmm. before it comes back into the office. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So the monitored ones are always better for that sort of thing. Um, so with a monitored um, antivirus, you're talking about a monthly payment? Um, sometimes it's a monthly payment, sometimes it's an annual payment based on a monthly amount, right. if you follow me. Yes. So if you say, for instance, $5 a machine, okay, and you might pay $60 for the year, yep. okay? Um, some people pay less, some people pay more, okay. and it depends on what you want. You can get good packs with three or five to cover your family or the business, okay, for a couple of hundred dollars, okay, and it covers everything. It's a paid version, you get regular updates. Okay, because the idea is you want to have an update of an antivirus twice a week, three times a week, it needs to be updated. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a fast moving field and there's lots of stuff going on out there. Does that happen automatically? With the paid versions, yes. Yep. So in years gone by, um, you were asked if you would like to. That's right. Yes. Now, nowadays with the paid ones, don't, they don't bother asking. Right. They assume you're paying for it, you want it. They assume that I'll say no to do that later. <laughs> Um, all right, so and you did say that USB drives aren't good for backups. Why? They die. Right. Okay, so it depends on how, how you're doing it and what you're doing. You know, if that's the only backup you've got, okay, and that's what you're doing for your backups, it's great. It's better than nothing. Mm. You know, use it. Go for it. Do it. Do it. But you can't expect the USB drive to last forever. Okay, okay? so if you've stored off this month's um, you know, or, or June 30 last year's um, financials and you want to keep it for posterity, don't store it on something like that, mm -hmm. okay, because it will die at some point. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is risk. The other thing, portable hard drives, they're quite often bashed, dropped, you know, knocked. They're, they're, they're roughed up. Now, any movement on a drive like that will hurt it. Really? Yes. Oh gosh, I have to be gentle when I put it in the drawer, don't I? <laughs> um, yeah, gentle is not the thing, you know. It, it's exceedingly, you know. If you think um, you get a plate and you um, stick it on a on a stick and spin it, you've seen those things on yes. TV, okay? Yes. What do you do when you knock the stick? Well, the plate falls off. Well, the do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing. You've got a ceramic plate. Mm. That's what a disc is, okay? It's in a metal housing, okay? But it hasn't got a lot of shock absorbers. I'm sure a shock absorbers on it, okay? It hasn't got a lot of buffering in it, okay? Mm. They do a lot, they can, they can do a lot, okay? But they can only do so much. Oh, see, here, here am I thinking, wow, I've done the right thing and I'm backing up to this external hard drive. And, and you are, 
and you are, but don't just wreck the hard drive <laughs> by throwing it in the drawer. <gasps> no. <laughs> All right, so what is an SSL certificate and why is it important? Sure. Um, I'll just touch on that USB thing again. The best set of backups is always the ones which are off-site and static. So we use NASA's or cloud storage. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because people don't move them. So they don't get knocked in, and there's not the human factor. The cloud is all secured, yep. you know, all as much as you can with um, data sovereignty and things like that. Um, but, yeah, choose something that's semi-permanent. Semi-permanent. All that's right. right. Okay, so SSL certificates, right. Um, when you do your banking, okay, and you put your password in and you transfer money from, you know, A to B or, you know, sort of, um, uh, we spoke about... Um, you know, paying money for school or, or, or you know, um, getting your pays from your from your workplace, you know. Mm. Um, you want to make sure that the transaction that you're undertaking isn't being seen by anybody else. So on an individual level, you go to a website, okay, and you say to that website, or well, the website says to you, do you want all the, everything that we talk about between you and I to be secret? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you say yes. Okay, that's an SSL certificate. That's so what's SSL? Secure socket layer. Right. Now we spoke about portal ports. Yep. Okay, socket is, a, is another name for port. Yep. Okay, and so what it is is saying, righto, I'm going to have access from the website, the front end of the bank, so bank A, has a firewall. Now the firewall will automatically accept SSL encrypted packets without reading them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, any firewall can't read inside an SSL packet because it's sealed. Mm -hmm. And all the labeling that happens, it happens on the outside. Okay. Okay. Yep. So we have these, these built up layers of security. Um, and so an SSL certificate says, I've got a key, and the other end has got a key, and they match, mm -hmm. you know, a bit, a bit like his and hers keys. You know, and there's there's other words to use for it that are more complicated, but if they're his and hers, they match, they go together. Yeah. So the idea is that um, you put uh, the the packet gets enclosed into a secret container. It gets locked with one key, and when it gets to its destination, the other key is used to open it. Right. Okay. Yes. And that's the only place it can be opened. Now, there's still the count, the one to a thousand, still works, and that's on the outside. So that the person receiving it knows if they've only had 997 rather than a thousand packets. Mm -hmm. And so they'll just get another repeat of those packets that have been sent or lost or, or missed. If someone tries to open them, okay, they won't be able to get into anything. It won't make sense mm -hmm. because it'll be encrypted. Yep. If you imagine you, a loaf of bread is infected with something, okay, and you cut into the bread and it's infected all the way through, no matter how where you cut or how you cut that's encryption, okay? That's what an SSL certificate does. So okay. you break it, it's still, it's not solved. It's still encrypted. Right. Okay? And so that's what an SSL certificate is for, and that's why it's important. It's from a website, specifically, yep. but it can also be used for emails. Okay. In the same way, same sort of thing. Um, so you're um, sending information between two points, Securely, and it's a bit like a VPN. We spoke about a VPN just a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. VPN is sort of people and sites. Yep. SSL is the way it's transported. Okay. Okay. Yes. So they're the security guards on the on the semi trail. Now we do have more questions, but we have run out of time, ah. so we will have to get to them <laughs> next week no problem, or an, on another show. <laughs> no worries at all. Um, but any, as always, thank you so much for joining us on Local Business Focus. Peter Treneman from Group Support, proud station sponsor. Thanks for having me.